Hits today is dedicated to Lionel Richie. His string of hits are so beautiful. All of them could make you cry. Whether you're dealing with heartbreak or um, you're trying to woo a woman or you're in that stage where you're just trying to make sure that um, she understands that you are sorry. You're apologizing. There's literally a song for every season of your life off of Lionel Richie's catalog. I'm going to make sure that I drop each one. And I've also got um, the beginning of things. He started off as a member of the group The Commodores and they dominated the scene in the 70s and the 80s. The Commodores was an American group that was a combination of two. So two groups got together and um, it was the Mystics and the Jays. So Lionel Richie described some of the members of the Mystics as jazz buffs and there's also other people that were live performers so the members of this group got together in the 70s and this was at the peak of the soul and jazz um, sound the members of the group were mostly freshmen at the Tuskegee Institute and um, they signed with Motown in 1972 having caught the eye of the Jackson 5 while on tour. Uh, Of course, all the members were successful and highly talented. However, there was something about the co-lead singer, his name, Lionel Richie. He was the fair-skinned guy. The band's biggest hits include ballads, including Three Times a Lady, Night Shift, funky dance hits, including Brick House, one of my personal favorites, and Lady, You Bring Me Up in Too Hot to trot. The Commodores started off playing in parking lots and friends parties and festivals, but it was low key. And um, they did a little bit of funk, and one of their biggest funk songs is Brick House. And right about this time, uh, Lionel Richie was a co lead singer with somebody else. And um, there were different lineup changes during the uh, time that the Commodores were performing. And uh, Lionel Richie was together with Millen Williams, and uh, there's another guy here called. Michael Gilbert and Skylar Jeff and of course um, Thomas McClary all these guys were in the shadow of Lionel Richie he was the fair skinned guy with the Jerry curls and all the ladies wanted to just see that guy that guy called Lionel that's the one we're looking at and in this time at their peak they had songs including three times a lady which reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and they also had that song easy the one I played for you earlier and there was also um, uh, night shift we cannot talk about Lionel Richie and the Commodores without playing that song night shift right after the Commodores he decided to go solo and in the 70s they enjoyed a huge fan Fan base and lots of the fans wanted to see Lionel Richie. So in 1981, he made his exit, and in 1982, things started to work for him. The turning point came in 1982 when Lionel Richie left to become a solo artist. While he soared to upper levels of superstardom, the public largely forgot about the Commodores. The hits remained, but nobody cared about the Commodores anymore. You know, the last few years after he left began to be uh, to, to become disastrous because um, they had uh, literally no record sales and they were reduced to playing in small halls or any backyard wedding they could get. And on the other side of town, Lionel Richie was doing big. But how did this all begin? You and I were talking once and you told me something that I've been thinking about a lot. You said that you didn't want to leave the Commodores. Is that true? I had no intent. I just always assume that you're like, okay, I'm Lionel Richie now. I'm ready to go and be all, go on my own. Listen, you know what solo means? Yeah. Solo means you get another band. Mm -hmm. I already had a band. Right. The problem that happened with the Commodores was it was so difficult from a press point of view. In other words, everyone would write it was very painful. I've, I've been through this with the guys when one guy gets a hit record and no one else gets the hit record. Right. I know what that feels like. And the press kept saying terrible things like, what's a guy like Lionel Richie doing in a band like the Commodores? This is the press now. Or finally, Lionel Richie comes on stage and he sings his love songs. Try to go back to a rehearsal after that. Then they took it hard. And it's, it's very difficult. So we didn't really think of it as being this long. It's just going to be a break for a minute to kind of get the, everybody's attitude down a little bit. It's just that right after that, all night long happened. Uh huh. In this love. Did they call you and say, hey, you know what? We changed our mind. No, that never happened. That never happened? That never, that never Is happened. Is it too late now? No, it's a little too late. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> a little too late. Wow. 
Thanks for watching. One of the greatest balladeers of the 80s. Um, you know what? He had one of the most successful careers. He's given us amazing hit songs. And let me tell you, he's a family man. He's a songwriter. And to be honest, he doesn't really like being called a sex symbol. He's just comfortable being an amazing recording and performing artist. Lionel Richie was born and raised in Alabama, the son of Lionel Brockman and Alberta Foster. He grew up on the campus and um, he was part of an amazing group of young church people. But he ultimately decided he was not going to be a priest. He didn't want to be priest material and decided to continue his musical career. As a member of different bands, he eventually joined that amazing group, the Commodores. So as a student in campus, um, they decided to uh, release a couple of tracks and um, they gave us amazing hits. Some of them we have played on the show already. So his solo career kicked off in 1982 and he released amazing singles, including a number one song called Truly, You Are and My Love. Right after 1981, things went upwards for Lionel Richie. He became a global superstar. His songs were on everybody's tongue. One of the hits here is Truly. The other one is You Are and My Love. Right after that, he had All Night Long, a Caribbean flavored dance number that was promoted by a colorful music video. You guys love it so much here, so we played a lot. I'm going to be playing it right here again. Several more top 10 hits followed, including the successful one called Hello in 1984, a sentimental love song, and Stuck On You, oh my goodness, and Penny Lover as well. So after this album gained popularity, he went on to promote one particular song called Ballerina Girl. And then he made his return to recording and performing following the release of his first greatest hits collection called Back to Front in 1992. His later years from the 2000s had amazing collaborations, including a tribute concert with Fantasia Barrino, among others. In the 2000s, there's a song here that you are requesting. It's called I Call It Love. It's on the playlist. His catalog is incredible. I'm going to be dropping all that and more, including another one called Do It To Me One More Time. <laughs> I love it. In the 2000s, he's done everything from reality TV to promising a comeback with the Commodores, at least the ones that are alive. He says, if we do it any later, people are going to forget who they were. They were kings back in the day. His personal life has not had a lot of controversy, but he did get married twice. He is disgustingly romantic. And of course, a lot of people say that um, whenever he falls in love, he loses a house. So he has had his fair share of drama, but not enough to cloud his amazing talent. Lionel Richie has been there, done that when it comes to also nurturing and supporting new school talent. The Spice Drive with Monique. Spicing up your drive.